This is Corus's alternative to a chest strap. It's a heart rate monitor you can wear on your arm. Turns out it's actually quite good. Well, for the most part it is because I did find it struggles during some exercises. In this review, I'll show you why you might wanna get this little guy, but also why you might wanna avoid it. Let's get started. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now this review is going to be a bit different than my normal reviews because I only received the Coral's heart rate monitor two days before release and I'm actually quite busy with work as well. So I don't have time at the end to go over all the results once I'm fully done with testing. Instead, I'll record each part of the testing when I'm done with that part and we'll go through that journey of discovering how good the Coral's heart rate monitor is together. Also, the quality of the video production might be a bit more ghetto, but that might also be fun for a change. Before getting to the results, let me briefly summarize what this heart rate monitor or HRM in short is and what Coros says it's for. The HRM is Coros' alternative to an ECG chest strap, you know, the kind of big strap you wear on your chest that generally gives the most accurate heart rate readings. You can wear Coros' heart rate monitor on your arm instead. Now Coros claims that their heart rate monitor is much more comfortable and easy to use, but has an accuracy close to that of an ECG chest strap. We will of course be testing if that's true. Now the heart rate monitor has built-in wear detection which means it automatically powers on and off based on when it's worn and the specs at least say it has a range of up to 120 meters with 38 hours of full operation or 80 days on standby mode. Now it releases today in the US and China and in September in the rest of the world. The price of the HRM will be set at 79 US dollars at launch and I would say that the closest device out there at the moment is the Polar Verity Sense which can be worn in a similar manner. However, I found that the Verity Sense is okay though not great. So let's get to the actual testing and check if the Coros HRM is better. To test the heart rate performance, I'll compare it to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which has been used in several scientific studies and can generally record my heart rate very accurately. By the way, Coros did send me this device, but they don't sponsor this video and they didn't get to see or influence the content of this video. I'll start by testing the performance of the Coros HRM while cycling outside and during testing I'll be wearing the HRM on my biceps. Okay, I've been able to do a couple of bike rides now with the Coros heart rate monitor and now it's time to find out how it performed. Now this is the part you normally don't get to see but I need to write a bunch of computer code because I haven't really analyzed any Coros watches before. So let's take a look. I'll code that out and then we get to see the results. Honestly, that was a bit more work than I expected but the analysis is now done. Let's take a look at how the Coros heart rate monitor performed. And here you can see an overview of the Coros heart rate monitor during three outdoor cycling sessions. Now along the horizontal axis, we have the heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And along the vertical axis is the heart rate according to the Coros heart rate monitor. And each dot here is a matching measurement between the heart rate recorded by the Polar H10 and that by the Coros heart rate monitor. And if the values perfectly agree, they should all be along the blue line right here. And the darker black the color, the more dots that there are. And as you can see, luckily most points are along the blue line. There are a few moments where the values are below the blue line, meaning that the heart rate monitor detected a too low heart rate, but overall this doesn't look that bad. The correlation is 0.9, which is actually quite good for cycling outside. Most watches struggle quite a bit. But let's take a look at the three individual bike rides so we can see the strengths and the weaknesses of the Coros heart rate monitor. And here you can see the results for the first bike ride with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the heart rate on the vertical axis where in blue-green I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Coros heart rate monitor. And as you can see, the agreement is quite good overall. The Coros heart rate monitor is generally able to follow the heart rate of the Polar H10, though there are some moments where it struggled. You can see here in the beginning, it didn't pick up on some of the peaks, and you can also see that in some moments, it has some delay in picking up a change in my heart rate, as you can see right here and right here. But overall, this doesn't look that bad. And for this second bike ride, we see more or less the same thing, that there were two more extreme moments where it had a delay in picking up an increase in my heart rate. Still, compared to other watches, this actually looks quite good. And we see more or less the same thing for this final bike ride, where the performance is quite good. It's mostly able to pick up on the heart rate correctly, though there are some moments where there's delay in it picking up the increase in my heart rate, as you can see right here, but also right here and right here. Still, compared to most smartwatches out there, for instance, this is looking quite good. And I actually also recorded my heart rate for several hours while I was just going about my day to see how good the heart rate measurements were at rest and also during physical activity that wasn't too intense. And those results are displayed right here. As you can see, most of my heart rate measurements are in the lower heart rate range, so between 45, 43, and maybe 80 BPM. And that's where the Coros heart rate monitor actually agrees very well with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. 
Also in the higher heart rate range, there's generally a good agreement, though I didn't have many measurements there. Though there were some moments right here where you can see that the coarse heart rate monitor detected a too high heart rate, probably double the heart rate it should have, for instance, right here. Still, overall, this agreement is very good and the correlation at 0.95 isn't that bad at all. But let's take a look at the individual sessions to see what it actually looked like. And here you can see the results for the first part of the day where I wore the strap for about one to three hours. And as you can see, there's generally a good agreement between both devices, though it is a bit difficult to see. Though sometimes the coarse heart rate monitor tends to pick up more extreme values, as you can see right here, for instance. And you can generally see there's a bit more variation in heart rate compared to the Polar H10, so a bit more high and a bit more low values. Though overall, I would say the agreement is quite good. And you can see the same thing for this second part of the day right here, where I was a bit more active. And as you can see, the moment my heart rate increased, it was able to pick up on those increases in my heart rate quite accurately. So I would say generally this is looking quite good, though there might be a bit more noise overall, so some slightly more high and low values, but we're really looking into the margins right here. So this is a small deviation compared to the overall variation in heart rate. So that honestly doesn't look too bad for cycling outside. Now I wanna look at both an easier exercise, so cycling indoors, and a harder exercise, weightlifting, and see how the heart rate monitor performs for this. So I'll do one indoor cycling session and one weightlifting session tonight, and afterwards we'll take a look at those results. And then tomorrow morning, I'll do another weightlifting session and another indoor cycling session to make sure that the results are consistent. And after that, I'll also make general overview plots where you can compare the performance of the coarse heart rate monitor to that of other devices. And finally, we'll draw our final conclusions. And here you can see that overview and cycling indoors should actually be easier for the heart rate monitor as there's less bumpiness and also less tension on my arms. But we actually see a similar correlation as we saw for cycling outside, so a correlation of 0.9. And this is a bit surprising since most watches perform better for cycling indoors than for outside. But we're just looking at a single indoor cycling session so we cannot draw too firm conclusions. What we can see is that most points are along the blue line, but there's a few points right here that are along this red line. Now this red line indicates that the heart rate monitor detected half the heart rate it should have detected. So this happens sometimes where the heart rate is kind of noisy and it cannot decide if it's half the actual heart rate or the real heart rate. And in this case, for a little bit at least, it made the wrong decision. But let's take a look at the indoor cycling session itself to see what it actually looked like. And here we have the results for that spinning session. Again, in blue-green we have the ECG chest strap, and in red the coral's heart rate monitor. And as you can see, in most cases there's an almost perfect overlap between the red and blue line, indicating a perfect agreement between those devices in those moments. But there's one moment right here where the heart rate monitor detected a too low heart rate. And as you can see, this is likely the moment where it detected half the actual heart rate. So we can see right here, for instance, that the heart rate monitor detected a heart rate of 75 BPM, but in reality, the ECG chest strap detected something closer to 150 BPM. So this is somewhat similar to what we saw for cycling outside, where there's sometimes a delay in picking up an increase in heart rate, and in this case, it was because it detected half of the actual heart rate. Still, I need to do a few more indoor cycling sessions to see if this was a one-off or if this happens more often. Now, I only have time for one more indoor cycling session, but at least we can see if it happens again. But let's first take a look at the results I had during my weightlifting session. And here you can see the results for that weightlifting session. Now, weightlifting was one of the most difficult exercises for a watch or other device to track because there's so much tension on my wrist and on my arm. And as you can see, the correlation is now much lower at 0.62. And we generally see many more points away from the blue line. So there's much more noise. So for this first weightlifting session, it isn't looking that great, but let's take a look at the actual patterns. And here we have the results for the weightlifting session. And each time I did a set of my exercise, my heart rate increased, as you can see by the blue peaks right here. And what is pretty obvious to me is that in most cases, the heart rate monitor wasn't able to follow along that well the peaks in my heart rate. You can see right here it missed the top of my peak and also right here, right here, right here, and also during most of the second part of my training. There were a few peaks it detected, like these ones right here, maybe this one right here and this one right here. Still, overall, it doesn't look that good based on this first weightlifting session. But as I said, I'll do another one tomorrow morning and we'll see if that one is any better. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off-the-cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's look at the performance during my last sessions of spinning and weightlifting. And here we have that second spinning session from, well, this afternoon slash morning. And as you can see, the chorus heart rate monitor in red agrees very well with the Polar H10 chest strap in blue. 
they basically overlap perfectly. Though there are again some hints of a delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate. You can see that for instance right here, but also right here and right here. Still overall for this session, it looks really good. And we can actually put the performance of the Coral's heart rate monitor in perspective by comparing it to many of the other devices I've tested in the past and those results are displayed right here. With along the horizontal axis the correlation we were looking at before and they're ordered from worst to best on the vertical axis. So the further to the right and the higher devices the better is its performance. And as you can see the Coral's heart rate monitor is okay though not great. But let's zoom in a bit to see those results even better. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here with just the watches and devices with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. So this does mean we're only looking at the better devices out there. But as you can see, the Chorus heart rate monitor isn't the very best device out there. It's close to the Whoopstrap 4.0 for instance, which is interesting because this is also worn on the biceps, at least by me. But it's not as good as for instance some Garmin devices right here. So the more expensive Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix 2 Pro. But particularly some Galaxy watches, some Huawei watches and especially the Apple Watches are doing significantly better than the Chorus HRM, at least for cycling indoors. Still, I wouldn't say that overall the Chorus HRM is bad, since with the two rides combined, the correlation is about 0 0.93. But I just want to say that based on my limited testing, there are some hints that there are some better devices out there, at least for cycling indoors. And here we have the second weightlifting session with the Chorus heart rate monitor. And as you can see, again, this isn't very good. For weightlifting, it doesn't seem to be able to pick up on those peaks in my heart rate. So you see all these peaks in blue right here. And basically only two, maybe three of those peaks were picked up on by the Chorus heart rate monitor. But still overall, this doesn't look very good. Now I did upper body exercises for both these sessions. So there was a lot of tension on my arm. And I guess the Chorus heart rate monitor just cannot handle this. Now also for weightlifting we can make an overview plot with all devices I've tested so far. And as you can see the Coral's heart rate monitor is somewhere in the upper middle class of devices. Again it's very close to the Whoopstrap 4.0 but for instance also the Galaxy watch and some Huawei bands are really close. But weightlifting is actually very tough for smartwatches and other devices. And the only watches I would trust are Apple watches and some selected Huawei watches. I would say that during weightlifting the recommended thing is still to use an EGG chest strap then you just know you will get a reliable result and most watches that use these green lights so this PPG sensor are just unreliable. However, where the Coral's heart rate monitor is doing very well is for cycling outside and that overview is displayed right here. So again, as for the other overviews, the further to the right and the higher devices, the better the agreement with each chest strap. And for cycling outside, the Coral's heart rate monitor is amongst the better devices out there. It's about as good as some Huawei Watch GT series watches and the Huawei Band 8 that I recently tested. And it seems to be doing significantly better, at least on me, than some Garmin devices and also some devices from Fitbit. So overall, for cycling outside, I'm actually quite happy with the performance. So what's my final verdict on the Coros HRM? Well, it's not bad actually, and it might be exactly what some of you need, but it's not a replacement for an ECG chest strap just yet. It's amongst the best devices for cycling outside, which is really impressive. So most watches struggle there a lot and the Coral's HRM does quite good. During cycling indoors, it was also pretty good, though I was surprised with some of the minor artifacts it showed. However, it's just not good enough during weightlifting, at least on me. Once there's a lot of tension on my biceps, it just doesn't seem to be able to track my heart rate accurately. I do have to say that this testing is still preliminary since I was only able to log a limited number of training sessions with the HRM. Also I cannot predict how for instance different skin tones or tattoos would affect the performance since these could have quite drastic impacts on the results. That being said, my impression at the moment of the Coros HRM is that it's good enough for most people that are into cardio and endurance sports but it's not suitable for people that focus on weightlifting. Now if you do decide to get the Coros HRM, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper and at the same time you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below, they do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watched this whole video on the Coros HRM, you might also be interested in my top picks of 2023 right here. Now if you found this video useful, it would be great if you like, subscribe and comment, but of course that's totally up to you. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.